Thanks so much for your continued support for me to be the chair. So thank, thanks so much once again for that. Thank you. If we go on to the uh, third item, the second item on the agenda, colleagues, and that's appointments of vice chair. Do you have any nominations, please? Any further nominations? Well, you can have the ability that Councillor Tony Conception is the vice chair. Thank you. So we go on to item three, which is apologies for absence. Andy? Uh, Councillors Conception, Oxley, and Nelson. Okay, can they be recorded? Stand agreed. So we go on to item four, which is the minutes of the authority meeting held on the 22nd of April. May be accepted as a true record. Can be agreed. And we go on to item five with declarations of interest by members or officers and officers. Non received. Can that be noted? So we go on to item six with questions of members under rule nine on page seven. Non received again. Can that be noted? Do we have any uh, on item seven on page nine questions from members of the public? Motion proposed by members under Rule 15 on page 11, item 8. Not received. So it can be noted. So we go on to scheme of delegation and procedure rules of item 9 on page 13, and that's <coughs> Mandy. Let's take us through that. Thank you, Mandy. Thank you, Chair. Um, we're required by our procedural rules to adopt the scheme of delegation each year. We also take the opportunity to review our, our constitution, which includes a set of procedural rules. This year, we've, we're not proposing any changes to our procedural rules, and I uh, just need to ask members to adopt the scheme of delegation for the current year. Any questions or observations on that? Those recommend recommendations be agreed. So we go on to item 10. There's questions to discharge of functions uh, on page 25. In the move, it's uh, Gray Morgan for Nosley, Alan Condor for St. Helens, Kevin McCloskey for uh, Sefton, Laura Robson, Collins for Liverpool, and Tony Norbury for Quirrell. Can that be agreed? Agreed. Agreed. Thanks very much. So we go on to item 11, appointments of committees. And also, colleagues, we have to approve the terms of reference on page 29. Uh, if you can bear with me, I'll take you through these. So, the forward, the forward planning panel would be Councillors uh, Morgan. Oh, is that the one? We're delegating this one, sorry, to the monitoring officer, uh, for the, for, and, and they're going to speak to the new delegates. Can that be agreed? Also, at the Appeals Committee, can we delegate that as well to, to Amanda? And on that will be three plus one opposition. So we can sort that out if that's okay, colleagues. Orders and Governance Committee, can we also delegate that? And that again, that's a make up of four councillors, which will be three on, on the opposition. And if we go on to Investigating and Disciplinary Committee, we have councillors Kluski. Laura Robson Collins and Steve Williams. Um, could we appoint Kevin Klosky as the chair for that committee if that could be agreed? Is that okay? Is that all right? Thank you. Mersey Waste Holdings Limited Board. Could we also delegate that to, 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 to Amanda? And then the Bidston and Bidston and Methane Limited Board, which also includes Village. Billings. So could we, <coughs> Steve Williams is already on that, so he still want to be on Steve. Yeah. Because it includes Billings, could we move Councillor Alan Cunliffe? Can that be agreed? agreed? And then the North West Boys Organisation, could we also delegate that to, to the Can that be agreed?
item 12, which is internal reports. Um, is it Mandy again? Peter. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. Um, members will recall that uh, the authority's internal audit is provided by St. Helens Council's internal audit team under a service level agreement. Paul Chowdhury is here from St. Helens internal audit. There are two reports. The first report comments on the audit review of the authority's relatively new performance management framework. Um, it gives substantial assurance, which is a strong assessment of the OK issues for members. Uh, the second report is a review of waste contracts, which is key for the authority. It gives high assurance which is the best result we can achieve. And again, there are no key issues for members. And once again, the contract sections should be commended for uh, their work as well. Let's say Bob Shadow is here from St. Helens internal audits to uh, present his version of the reports and to respond to questions. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Thank you Peter. Good uh, afternoon, everybody. <coughs> I think Peter said most of what I'd like to say, <laughs> as usual. But as I said, it was sort of Two reports we completed in March, and the last two reports were planned for year 1560 to be all the plans achieved. These two reports obviously have come to this meeting because we missed the last meeting. As Peter said, the two reports were around the performance management framework arrangements, and we were very happy that the new system was uh, bedded in and the ethos was there. We went through different aspects with Mandy, and we were very pleased. There's two small recommendations that we could put in. It's got substantial, which is our second highest sort of uh, assurance that would happen with that. The second one is around the actual contract, and as usual, as you will be aware, the last probably two years, it's always been high assurance. We've looked at three, three to four uh, months' contract of the year, and we bring that into this final report. And I'm happy to say that all recommendations of probably two and a half years will be implemented, and as the team now of the improvement system. Contracts were managed effectively and compared with the original estimates, about £1 million uh, 
the same was made. However, changes to the commodity prices and the sale of recyclers has impacted on the authority's guaranteed income on the contract, leading to a Across the rest of the authority's activities, there have been understandings due to a combination of positive action by the authority on administration costs, closed landfill sites, and reductions in demand, for example, on the lower than expected take of recycled credits. Lower spending on strategy updates and the reduced scheme of waste prevention program are offset by an increase in the cost of interest payments, rental rates, and depreciation in terms of account costs. But overall, the authority has its cost. Balances, balances and reserves are set out on uh, page 69 of the report and, and they show that the general fund stands at almost £16 million. This level of reserve would usually be considered to be higher than normal. However, there is already a plan in place to utilise the reserve to support the levies of districts, mitigating its impact in future years. Almost £10 million of the reserves are planned to be used in 2016-17 and under Current projections, the remainder will be used in 2017-18 unless levy increases are considered in the next budget round. Uh, the capital reserve, which is the only other reserve we have, is there to help prevent the authority from borrowing additional amounts to finance its capital program. The fund will enable the authority to pre prevent itself from having to borrow um, funds to invest in facilities for another couple of years, after which we'll need to take stuff, stock up the infrastructure and borrowing. It's not perfect, however, because it is just a snapshot or a series of snapshots 
So we have to be careful in interpreting the data. But the key results are on page 94. some sort of big news stories here. The first one really is that in the residual waste bin, the non-recyclable bin, about 39% of that is food waste for those councils that don't do food waste. Okay, so a bigger proportion of what's left in the residual bin, as you take out more recyclables into the other bin, a bigger proportion of what's left is food waste. Now, food waste has a big carbon impact. It's quite a heavy material, so it has a tonnage um, rated uh, element. And it's often, a it, uh, percentage of that food waste has actually never been opened by the consumer. It's, never, it's, not, it's not half eaten food. A lot of it's still in its packaging and never been opened. But it's not past its sell by date or past its use by date. But there is an issue about the prevention of food waste, the reuse of food through food banks or whatever, whatever else it might be, before people are throwing it in their residual bin. And of course, the big question for councils, collection authorities, is are we going to collect food waste? Because it's a big proportion of that residual bin. Um, so that's uh, an indicator of maybe a, an issue for the waste strategy. And we are, we are about to start the review of the five-year joint waste strategy for Merseyside. So this is a key finding in terms of asking questions of us all around things like food waste. There's another issue with food waste. It's quite a big tonnage. If you look at the available food waste in the residual bin, it's about 80,000 tonnes. That 80,000 tonnes at the moment would go to the energy recovery facility at Wilton. If you can take some of that 80,000 tonnes out of the residual bin and have it either prevent it or reuse it or recycle it, then that is another 40, 50,000 tonnes of capacity available in the resource recovery contract and the incinerator that might be available to sell to third parties and to which we can get a share of electricity revenues from. You see what I mean? So if you can take material like this out of the residual bin, there is an impact on the RRC contract. And that shouldn't be forgotten that we, when we come to discussing the strategy later this year and early next year, that will be another key issue to throw into the mix around the cost of the various uh, services. And if you notice in the recommendation, it does mention looking at the whole system costs before making decisions about food waste, because it's not simple. There are a lot of issues that you need to, you need to think about as a council and certainly as a waste disposal authority. The second main finding, I think, is the issue around um, good recycled materials that are still in the residual bin. So this is a message, message about key materials like paper, textiles, car, glass, metal and plastic. That's perfectly possible to recycle, but for some reason householders have not put it in the right bin. And I think that points out things like communications, campaigns with the public, do people understand? Are they confused? Why is it appearing in the wrong bin? It means sweating assets and getting your existing council curbside systems working to their maximum effectiveness because you're missing out on this good material. Much of that material we can recycle and sell to the commodity markets. So, you know, it's actually, we're not doing ourselves any favours. We need to minimise the amount of good recycling that's still appearing in the residual bin. I think another issue there would be things like, uh, there's another mention there of 7,000 tonnes of garden waste in the residual bin. And there is then the issue of green waste charging. Because what happens sometimes with green waste charging is some people you know, may not go to home composting. They may be tempted to put it in their residual bin or take it to the household waste recycling centre. That still has a cost to all to all councils. So again, that would be need, need to be taken into account if councils were considering whether or not to charge for green waste services. The third point there is about 
what, what they call contamination in the report, what we mean really is non-target materials. Materials for which there might not be a ready market, for which you can't necessarily get a good price for or sell into the commodity markets. And they can contaminate the quality of the material you do want. So certain types of plastic, if they end up in large quantities in the recycling bin, can actually decrease the price you get for the plastic that the market does want because it's all bailed up together. And it has to be sold as mixed plastic, not a single type of plastic, a single type of polymer. So this is about, again, communication and education initiatives. It's difficult for the public because it's confusing. What? Why can I recycle milk bottles, plastic milk bottles, but not yogurt pots? And the reason is because there's no market for, the markets are different. There is a ready market, good, good prices for certain types of plastics, and not good prices for other types of plastics. But we have to work with our councils to make sure that we get the messages right, and that the public clearly understands why certain things we do want in the recycling bin, certain things at the moment we don't, but that could change. Technology moves on, every, the markets change. I mean, years ago we had to pay to get rid of paper, now it's fetching top price. But that's the, that's the world we live in, I'm afraid, in terms of the commodity markets for recyclables. And again, this needs to be fed into the strategic review and the review of the joint waste strategy and the council's own decision making. And the final one there is about, is, is making a point about household waste recycling centres. What the composition analysis suggests is that there's still a lot of material going to household waste recycling centres into the residual skip that could be reused. It could be reused. Now, it's a, it's a difficult one because we struggle sometimes to get that material into the reuse market. We have got the reuse shop at South Sefton. The one old swan, I think they want to use it to, to um, accept donations, but they find it difficult to sell out of that as a shop. They find it easy to sell out of a high street type uh, operation. But you know, we are trying to maximize the ability to reuse some of this material, but there's still more, that tells us there's still more to do with the reuse of materials that are coming into the house or waste recycling center. Perhaps we should call them reuse and recycling centres. But anyway, um, there's some of the key findings that are, and the recommendations that are on the report reflect those key, those key uh, findings and give you some sense of the direction of travel and the issues that we're going to need to consider as, as an authority and indeed as, as collection authorities um, back in your district. What we um, don't have for you today is a full, contextual, insightful uh, look deep into this composition analysis. We wanted to make sure it was, it was out there. It's on our website. All the districts have got it. But we need to think very hard and work out what is this telling us. So to that end, we, were, we are proposing, and there's recommendation three on your report, a workshop with four members, and we're doing some with districts as well, district officers. So we can actually start to put some of this into context for you, and you can start to think a bit more about the issues. Um, of course, it's vitally important to the strategic review of waste, because it, talk, it is showing you where perhaps you might want to go next. Uh, and it's a fundamental part of the joint strategy for Merseyside. Happy to take any questions, Jim.
culture. It depends on, you know, every, every district is different. Your know, housing types and um, the scale, for instance, Liverpool scale is, a, is the biggest uh, authority. So there are, there are issues of scale. Um, you might want to look at this in the context of what else comes out of the strategic review. Um, so there are a whole host of issues, but the point, the important point, I think, is that every district is different. Every district needs to work with us to do the analysis so that members have got good options in front of them and understand fully what the issues are and what the costs look like. And, you know, it's very difficult for me to say at this stage when that might be completed and what your decisions might be in terms of rollout of any systems or, or not. Um, it is a matter for collection authorities, but the important point is we can we can work with you to work out your your costs and your issues. Yeah, the thing you know, Carl, I didn't mention at a previous meeting. I think we ought to be reminding people of the city of when it all started. People were excited about it, sort of sense it. I think that's sort of faded now. And part of it is. Just an additional thing, I've mentioned it many, many times on our local authority, <clears throat> that we have a huge bin like refuse wagons going down every street in the borough, and the space on them that we could be selling for advertising, that was the first time that we could sell the space, but we can also use it, pointing out the benefits of recycling, not just saying this is a bin wagon, you know, they, can, they can put posters on those, every, they'll go down every street in the change the message quite easily or focus on something else. But sadly I've got to say that uh, there's an element uh, in some local authorities that unless the officers think of it first, they don't seem to be interested in suggestions by councillors. <laughs> <laughs>
it's, it isn't, but there is a decision to do a full business in, which is very important point to what you just said actually about other authorities. Has anybody got it right? Uh, depends what you mean by getting it right. Um, if you talk to an accountant, <laughs> Peter, um, you know, the, the, they, there has been some very successful food systems in terms of recycling rate and good quality service. There have been some that have ended up not so great and fallen into dis disuse or, and that have been expensive um, to try to support. So you do need to think about whether you are doing this for environmental reasons or you do this for cost reasons or whatever it might be. And that's why the report makes a very important point about and, and why we're all have got the let's do a full business case because you need to play in an awful lot of factors. Locally, you can go and see St. Helens and you can go and see Seton, who are the two that are currently doing food waste collection. see a rat try and open one, you know what I mean? Um, it's often the perception, but when you go and look at the blood system, you can see that it can be done. And there are, I mean, the council of Connacht will, will correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not, I'm, I'm pretty sure St. Helens Council are not inundating with complaints about flies and smells from the food waste collection service.
So when they talk about smaller bins, it's usually the residual bin they're talking about. Because they've provided all the bins or boxes or whatever for the recycling. You find, I mean, I don't know about you, but I, I, my bin is, my residual bin is empty every two weeks, but I could easily, I could easily survive with every three weeks or four weeks, personally. It's only about third full, because it's all in the recycling. As it should be, you'd expect me to do that one. <laughs> I, would, I would also comment that um, the residual bins in Manchester, if uh, Manchester City Council are paying the, the le levy rates that Manchester declare they're paying three hundred pounds a ton, so they are trying to discourage people from using the residual bin through their levy mechanism. Perhaps on this topic, perhaps one of the problems is that we're trying to do a one size. 